Todd Aiken throws the Missouri Senate race into chaos. The Republican Party now has a Todd Aiken problem. With incendiary comments about rape and abortion. So-called legitimate rape. Legitimate rape. If it's a legitimate rape, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. This right-wing assault on women. A lot happening today. This caveman view of the sexes. The views expressed were offensive. Outrageous. Biologically stupid. Appalling. Rape is rape. This created a huge problem for the Romney campaign. Paul Ryan is being forced to defend his own record. There is no daylight between Paul Ryan's views and Todd Akin's views. Last year, Paul Ryan. This personhood amendment. No taxpayer funding for abortion act. Paul Ryan was a co-sponsor of that. He joined with Mr. Akin. Their ticket suffers from pathological hypocrisy. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. Do I believe Supreme Court should overturn Roe v. Wade? Yes. And what they believe is that women don't have a right to their own bodies. My presidency will be a pro-life presidency. I'm just not for federal funding of abortion. Planned Parenthood, we're going to get rid of that. It's not just Paul Ryan, and it's not just Todd Akin. We had the debate about birth control. They put this on their agenda. In the transvaginal probe debate, they want to cut preventative care. Rush Limbaugh's comments about Sandra Fluck. Women have a right to equality. Women, women, women. Women know what's going on. With 78 days to go until the presidential election, a crazy Republican congressman, no, not the one who's on the ticket with Mitt Romney, but another one, scared everyone in America who knows where babies come from. But even the political insanity of Congressman Todd Akin, as well as the actual insanity of Congressman Todd Akin, even all of that was not enough to bury the story of Mitt Romney's secret tax returns for even one day. Today, President Obama made an unscheduled appearance in the White House briefing room where he was asked about the secret tax returns. The first disclosure, the, the one years of, of tax returns that he disclosed indicated that uh, uh, you know, he used Swiss bank accounts, for example. Well. That may be perfectly legal, but I suspect if you ask the average American, uh, do you have one? And is that part of how you manage your tax obligations? They would say no. They would find that relevant information. As Maureen Dowd pointed out yesterday in the New York Times, Paul Ryan believes there is something called forcible rape, which is somehow different from and more serious than rape. A right-wing fanatic running for Claire McCaskill's Senate seat in Missouri got into trouble for the same idea, what he calls legitimate rape. He then went on to explain his understanding of the science of rape. It's a legitimate rape. Uh, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. But let's assume that maybe that didn't mm. work or something. You know, I think there should be some punishment, but the punishment ought to be in the rapist and, and not attacking the child. President Obama was asked about that today, too, and he couldn't seem to comprehend what Paul Ryan and Todd Akin have in mind when they talk about forcible rape and legitimate rape. Rape is rape. And the idea that we should be parsing and qualifying and uh, slicing uh, what types of rape uh, we're talking about uh, doesn't make sense to the American people uh, and certainly doesn't make sense to me. The president then turned to what Congressman Aiken's madness means for Mitt Romney. Although these particular comments uh, have uh, have led Governor Romney and uh, other Republicans to, to distance themselves. I think the underlying notion that uh, we should be making decisions on behalf of women for their health care decisions uh, or qualifying forcible rape versus non-forcible rape, uh, I think those are broader issues and that is a significant difference uh, in approach between, uh, between me and the other party. In the last presidential campaign, Mitt Romney proclaimed himself to be in the Aiken camp, opposing abortion even in cases of rape. 
I would welcome a circumstance where there was such a consensus in this country that we said we don't want to have abortion in this country at all, period. That would be wonderful. I'd be delighted. Is, would you sign that bill? I'm, let me say it. <laughs> I'd be delighted to sign that bill, but that's not where we are. That's not where America is today. Where America is, is ready to overturn Roe v. Wade and return to the states that authority. But if the, if the Congress got there, we had that kind of consensus in that country, terrific. Mitt Romney pretended to be outraged by Aiken's remarks today. His comments about, about rape uh, were deeply offensive. And um, I can't defend uh, what he said. I can't defend him. Do you think for the benefit of the party, sir, he should drop out? Well, the thing he should consider is what's in the best interest of the things he believes most deeply, uh, what will help uh, the country at this, at this critical time. Other Republicans are urging Aiken to leave the race, including Paul Ryan, who called Aiken personally. Also urging Aiken to drop out Fox News, uh, Sean Hannity, the conservative National Review, Republican Party Chairman Reince Priebus, Senate, Major Ma Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, uh, Senator Scott Brown, Senator John Cornyn, who is chairman of the Senate campaign, Republican Senate Campaign Committee, Karl Rove, backed by Super PAC Crossroads GPS, says it will not support Aiken's candidacy financially, nor will Tea Party Express or Tea Party Nation. Here is what Todd Aiken has to say to all of them. I was told that uh, that there is a decision has to be made by five o'clock tomorrow, but uh, I was calling you and letting you know that uh, I'm announcing today uh, that we're going to stay in. A, a national poll conducted earlier this month shows that among female registered voters, President Obama leads Mitt Romney by nine points, 53 to 44 percent. Joining me now, MSNBC's Crystal Ball and Joy Reid and the president of the Planned Parenthood Action Fund, Cecile Richards. Let's listen to what uh, Mitt Romney told Mike Huckabee about personhood. Would you have support of the constitutional amendment that would have established the definition of life at conception? Absolutely. Cecile Richards, that puts him very clearly uh, in the position of saying that uh, he is opposed to abortion in cases of rape or incest. Look, I think that this whole thing has been so disturbing uh, with Mr. Aiken. Uh, what I think folks are forgetting is that he's actually a sitting member of Congress. And what we've seen this entire year is a Congress that is actually willing to pass any bill they can to eliminate funding for Planned Parenthood, for cancer screenings, opposing birth control, and frankly that that's been the position of this Republican ticket, uh, that we have uh, candidates uh, for office now who are pledging to end access to, to family planning, to birth control, to overturning Roe versus Wade, and that's why I think this is causing such a storm, is that uh, Mr. Aiken, I know a lot of folks want to get him out of the race because he's a drag perhaps on the party, but let's face it, he and a lot of folks like him are now in the United States Congress voting on on issues that are impacting women's access to health care. And Paul Ryan votes uh, just like him. Let's uh, look at this statement that the Romney campaign uh, put out today saying, Governor Romney and Congressman Ryan disagree with Mr. Aiken's statement and our Romney-Ryan administration would not oppose abortion in instances of rape. Joy Reid, that is in direct contradiction to what we just heard Mitt Romney say. Yeah, absolutely, and it's in direct contradiction to Paul Ryan's history in which he has partnered with the same guy, Todd Aiken, to pass and to push bills that would limit abortion, including H.R. 3, which as you well know um, means that it was like the third thing that Congress did during this year, right? <laughs> so the House of Representatives came in. They have done something like 67 abortion-related bills. One of these bills that was sponsored, co-sponsored by Paul Paul Ryan and Todd Aiken got 251 votes in the House. You want to call Aiken fringe? He's not fringe. He is now the mainstream of the Republican Party. And I want to know what it is that Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney differ with him about. What specific thing he said don't they agree with? Because Paul Ryan has essentially the same beliefs on abortion, and Mitt Romney has, Mitt Romney has jumped into the clown car. He's going with this fringe of the party and trying to drive that car. So what do they disagree with? I'm not clear about that.
The Crystal Todd Aiken uh, seems to be hanging in there. He's already uh, sent out a fundraising plea saying, I am in this race to win. We need a conservative Senate. Help me defeat Claire. Claire McCaskill, that means, of course, by donating. He actually thinks he can raise money on this. <laughs> the uh, Machiavellian uh, political strategist in me wants to urge a bunch of Democrats to contribute to his campaign because <laughs> having him in there, as, as we know, Claire McCaskill actually spent money to have him be the Senate nominee because he seemed like a, sort of a crazy person who would say these sorts of things and then there he goes saying them. So uh, that strategist in me wants to urge Democrats to contribute to his campaign. I wouldn't actually do that. But the broader point here is, as Joy was making, you know, this is the default position of the Republican Party right now. And let's just remind people when we're talking about personhood amendments, like what was on the ballot in Mississippi and was defeated handily, that is giving the rights of a person to a fertilized egg. And it will not surprise you to learn that while it is mainstream public opinion within the Republican House caucus, it is a fringe belief that that should happen within the American public. And there's a broader pattern here where Republicans cannot actually talk about where they stand, not just on personhood, not just on for forcible rate, but when you look at something like Medicare vouchers, privatizing Social Security, raising taxes on the poor to finance another tax cut for the rich, these are positions that Republicans cannot actually talk about because the American people finds it wildly insane and unpopular. Okay, so that's part of the problem here is whenever anyone like Todd Akin sort of gives the game away by actually saying something close to what they believe, they have to run away from it because the American people are not in line with where they are. Yeah, Claire McCaskill thought that Todd Aiken was the person she wanted to run against. She spent some money on ads early during the Republican primary, uh, her ads against Aiken saying he was, quote, too conservative. And most political observers thought that was her attempt to get conservative voters to turn out for Aiken. But <laughs> Cecile Richards, uh, she has been running behind, mm -hmm. behind Congressman Aiken in Missouri, which I think shows people, uh, maybe some of whom didn't realize it before tonight, just what someone like uh uh, Claire McCaskill is up against in a state like Missouri and what right. you and Planned Parenthood are up against around the country in states like Missouri and elsewhere. Well, uh, look, I think, Lawrence, that women are very, uh, are, are beginning to focus on this election. I think, you know, as you showed earlier, it is the gender gap that is, uh, it's large and it's going to, I think it's going to continue to grow. And because of things like this, whether, uh, whether it's this or the more than thousand bills that were proposed either in Congress or in state legislatures to end women's access to basic health care in this country. I think what we're seeing, and, and I think the personhood uh, uh, idea it, that, that Mr. Romney supports is one good example, is the danger uh, of politicians basically playing politics with women's health care access in this country. And women don't think these are laughing matters, and I think as they begin to focus on this election, it's going to make it much tougher for uh, the politicians who have uh, spent all of their time focusing on ways to eliminate access to basic basic health care, not only uh, safe and legal abortion, but frankly, birth control as well. Mm -hmm. um, Cecile Richards, Crystal Ball, and Joy Reid, thank you all for joining me tonight. Thank, thank you, Lawrence. Lawrence. Coming up, Paul Ryan, who agrees with Todd Aiken about there being such a thing as legitimate rape, was forced to turn on Aiken today, but they've worked closely together on this issue in the past. Karen Finney and Steve Kornacki will join me with the Ryan Aiken Connection. And as we've seen, today's earthquake in Republican Party politics was not enough to make everyone forget about the secret Romney tax returns. Romney actually had the audacity to make a joke about his secret tax returns today. And in the rewrite tonight, what America and especially liberals owe Senator Claire McCaskill, the woman who is trying to prevent Todd Aiken from becoming a United States Senator.